October program. We're talking tonight with uh, County Administrator Danny Jordan and the Director of the Jackson County Road and Parks Department, John Vile, who are here with us in our topic tonight. We're going to continue is about Gold Ray Dam and, and the county's role in uh, seeking options of what to do with it. That's really kind of where we're at. So. Uh, what do you do with the thing? I mean, the thing was built a long time ago, and people have driven by it. John, it used to be the, the main entrance uh, into Jackson County was along that road there, which is not, I don't even know what it's called anymore, but uh, uh, so it's been there a long time. Gold Ray Dam has been a part of our county. Uh, what's led to this uh, study? Well, if you'd like, I can take you through a little presentation that kind of provides some background on the dam and uh, provides a little history to kind of set the stage for where we're at today. Do you find, before you do that, do you find a lot of people, both of you, do you find a lot of people have a lot of interest in this, that you're doing this project, that, uh, that there's a, uh, just a lot of interest in what you're doing here? There's a tremendous amount of interest. Okay. I, get, I get numerous phone calls every day. We received hundreds of responses in the forms of emails and letters. This is a very hot topic in the, in the Valley right now. All right, let's see. Well, I'm, I'm anxious to see and see what you've got to share with us. Today. Okay. Okay, back to the, to the PowerPoints we go. Good. <clears throat> Jackson County um, is the owner of Gold Ray Dam and all the property uh, surrounding it. We obtained the dam in 1972 from Pacific Power. Pacific Power had been uh, using this dam for power generation up till 1971. They ceased power generation activities in 1971 because it wasn't it was no longer profitable for them to use this dam for that for that purpose. And uh, the county uh, got the dam in '72. We have the dam, the powerhouse structure, and I'll, I'll have some pictures of what the powerhouse is and everything associated with it. Originally, the county obtained this piece of property because we thought it would be a great recreational site. It's a very difficult site to develop recreationally, and we really never have developed it for that purpose. How many acres is the whole area that the county owns? The, the, there's a mixture of ownerships in there. The Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife has a piece. Uh, Nature Conservancy has a piece. But in total, the, the entire area behind the dam that's kind of the, in the wetlands area is around 250 acres, okay. of which the, the county owns the majority of it. The majority owner is the yes. county. Okay. Yep. That makes you like 51% in my ter I guess in terms, of, <laughs> in terms of things like that. Okay. Um, one of the interesting things about this facility is there's actually two dams there. Most people don't know because you can't see it, but in front of the concrete structure is a, is a log crib dam. And that log crib dam was built by the Ray family in 1903 for the purpose of power generation. And we have some, we'll have some photos here to show that in a moment. Following that, um, they, so, and they eventually sold the dam to a, the power company, and Pacific Power built the concrete dam in 1941. It's a fairly large structure. It's almost 400 feet uh, uh, wide, yeah. and at the deepest place, it's about 40 feet high. Um, one of the questions, and we'll get to this in a little bit more detail, but in 1982, the county, after owning that dam for about 10 years, asked the question, What's, what would it take to generate power at that dam again, to, to start it up again? And at that time, the estimates um, were about $12.8 million. If we factor that up into today's dollars, it's around $50 million to generate power there today. And that's under a, a, a fish protection program that's nowhere near as aggressive as we'd have to do today. So the $50 million is probably even uh, a, a very uh, light estimate as far as the actual cost to generate power there. It doesn't sound necessarily very like feasible in the power generation part. When they built the dam originally, and you've got to go back, you know, of course the world was a lot different in 1903, you just put a dam across the Rogue River like the Ray brothers did, and what, fish, did, did fish stop there? I mean, was there a way around those? Do, do you know any of that, you know, historic part of this? My understanding is some of the fish passage issues came later, but initially it totally mm -hmm. blocked the river for some time where mm -hmm. fish couldn't pass at all. They, they eventually remedied that, but uh, yeah, like you say, back in 1903, if you had the means, you dam, could just put the just put the dam up. dam across the river and away you go. Yeah. yeah, and I'd like to address a little bit on the power generation issue. Okay. We, we've got a lot of questions to the county about have you made the decision to remove the dam or not. So John started off talking about the dam, but first I really would like to set the plate by saying we haven't made a decision to remove the dam. Oh, we've made a decision. Say that again. You have not made the decision. We have not made the decision. Okay. I, we okay. made a decision to accept a grant that should we choose ultimately to remove the dam, it will pay for that. And what else it will pay for is that even if we don't ultimately choose to remove the dam for whatever reason there mm -hmm. is, it will pay in phases the cost of all of the studies associated with looking at whether removing the dam is a viable option. So for us, it, at, at the minimum, will provide us a great amount of information 
whether the dam is removed or not, and ultimately it could potentially lead to the removal of the dam. A lot of people have said, well, you're speaking against power generation, and that's why I'm talking about this here, and you're for removing the dam, and you're you know, talking about supporting the, the uh, fish, fish issue. Mm -hmm. The fish issue really isn't an issue in terms of the county and the county's liability. There are a lot of people who fish, the, the fish passage is an issue for, and for us, um, the issue with fish passage is whether or not we have an adequate fish ladder. We've been told, we've been put on notice that it's not adequate, and if the dam stays, we'll have to make improvements to that. Mm -hmm. uh, with regard to the power issue, we are looking at three options with the dam. One option is to uh, remove the dam. Re totally remove it. Totally remove it. Yeah. One option is to do nothing, Leave like we've done is. since 1972. But you would have to check, you'd have to put the fish ladder we, we ultimately will have to do okay. that if, if, we, if you kept at, at a minimum, okay. eventually. Yes. Eventually, okay. Yeah. And we're also looking at the potential of generating power, uh, restoring the dam and generating power. Now, I've talked multiple times when people say, you can just, you know, you have the rights to generate power, you can go in there and throw in a couple of generators, and there you go. Well, what <laughs> it, why are you considering doing this? And what I want to speak to is, you know, there's a lot of assumptions people have made about our rights and the ability to generate power. and mm -hmm. and. While this requires much more investigation than the surface amount of information we have at this point, there, there, there continues to be complications presented to us with, with regard to the ability to generate power. And to speak to a couple of those, because I think they're really important, John spoke to the cost, you know, exceeding $50 million. That really is associated with the fact that we're going to have to remove a fish ladder, or rebuild a fish ladder. No matter what. We would have to install these generators, which are you know, tens of millions of dollars, and we'd have to go in and buttress the dam, reinforce the dam, and repair the dam. So there is a huge cost. The issue, though, really is, in Oregon law, and the law was passed in 1967, 67. there is no provision to use water from the Rogue River, basically from Lost Creek Dam, to the ocean for the purpose of generating power. So there's water rights on the rogue for multiple uses, right. agriculture and, and, and things like that. But there is a prohibitive law that's been on the books since 1967 that says you can't use this water to generate power. Though that right to generate power that pre-existed when the dam was used for generating power went away when the dam was decommissioned. Oh, that, that, okay. And so there, isn't, there is no right for us to do that. And, and people say, well, you know, yeah, you can still do it, you just have to change the law. And P potentially that could be in, in terms of investigating this, this alternative, we will look at what are the things we would need to do if we do it, and we'll be able to provide that information to the commissioners to be able to make a decision. And do you know how much, how much uh, uh, well, you don't know, this is what the studies are going to be, I, I realize that. Uh, my question was, well, do you know how much, how much power you could generate, and could you make money? If you can't make any money on it or, or pay for itself, then it doesn't seem to be probably a very good idea to do. Well, th there's that issue, but there's also the initial issue of investing 50 plus million dollars in it. The right. county doesn't just have 50 million dollars, and un unfortunately, the way that the grant funds come to us, there's not funds available to rebuild the dam and turn it into a power generator, uh, and so so that's an issue for us. If we were going to try to do that, it means raising money some way, and generally in government, that means some kind of bonding, general obligation bond, which means people pay taxes to have that kind of an option, sure. or there's pro there may be other options, and we'll try to vet those out through the process. So it's, it's not necessarily prohibitive, but it complicates the ability to just go throw a couple power generators in there and let's start making power because we can make all this money. The fact that Pacific Power decommissioned the dam, John mentioned this, they decommissioned it, and this is in the minutes from all the meetings that they decommissioned it saying, hey, this isn't economically feasible. We can't make any money off power. Now, that was in 1972. Lots changed since then. We don't know exactly how much power can be generated. That's part of the study. We don't know if we would be able to make money with the investment or not. We will know that. Uh, you know, I'm sure if it comes out saying the county can make $2 million a month by putting some power generators in here, the commissioners are really going to consider rebuilding the dam. Commissioners would probably so, consider that. Yeah. So, you know, there, there, there's just a lot more complications. And, the, the, and I realize people are very passionate about this issue, either because of environmental reasons, because of the association and long-term association with the dam being part of their life or our county, uh, because of financial reasons. So there, there's multiple reasons that people are passionate about it. For us, we really are not prepared to answer the question whether the dam should be removed or not until we get a lot more factual data about what the best option is. And the best option will in some way be subjective.